virtual victory. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Ashley. Thank you. And you are a cat mom, so yes. happy Mother's Day to you too. Know, my special little prince. Oh, little Kevin. So good morning to all of our mothers. We have a special giveaway for you today. So if you're a mother, click the link below down in the comments. We are giving away a special Mother's Day gift basket. So Ooh. you have a chance to win that. I'm gonna click the link. I'm gonna win that thing. Oh yes. I'm going to. <laughs> so today's a really special day. It is officially the beginning of Revival. I'm so excited. We had to wait a long time and now it's here. It's gonna be amazing. Starting us off today is Pastor Kelly from Canada. He's gonna bring us an amazing word. You guys are gonna love it. And every single night this week, we're gonna have a different pastor and worship team bringing us the word. If you are joining us today, we would love to know how you're watching. So we have Facebook watch parties, mm -hmm. a lot of people sharing it on Facebook, on YouTube. So comment below with how you're joining us this morning or better yet, even upload a selfie. Just yeah. hold that camera up, put the dog mm -hmm. filter on. You can make it really cute. Yes. So, and then if it's your first time joining us and uh, watching Virtual Victory, we definitely want to say welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. And we want you to text the word new, N-E-W, to 239-307-2443. That's right. And above all, we love Jesus here and we believe in the power of prayer. So if you need prayer today, go ahead and click the link below and tell us what you need. Tell us how we can be praying for you because we really wanna reach out and make sure that we're praying for you today. So we also, we've got a lot of really exciting things happening this week. In addition to everything else that's going on, we are relaunching groups. Groups, Yay, victory groups. finally. We have it's missed time. the social interaction. Yes. And so we are launching groups and it's gonna be under 10. Oh, I can handle that. We can do this. Under 10, yes. as many people. Yes. So sign up for Victory Groups. You can find it mm -hmm. in the app, all the groups Yay. that are available. And then we'll be meeting up with everybody this week and launching our groups. We're so excited for that. It's gonna be so great. We have worship coming to us today from My Victory in Canada. That is Pastor Kelly's church. And it's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited we get to worship with them today. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Something new 
This is how I'll find my battles 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 I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my balance. This is how I find my battles. 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 It may look like I'm so by you, oh boy, yeah. it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, this is how I find my battles, this is how I find
I love my mom because she is kind and generous and has always pointed me to Jesus no matter what. Uh, mom, thank you for all you do. I love you. What I love about my mom is she's just the best. Sorry, I got the best one. Uh, she's a great example. She loves God. She's the grandma to the whole entire church. I'm just thrilled that she's always given and given to everybody and that just recently she's just seen how much everybody loves her and they've taken such good care of her and, and I'm just so thankful for her. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love my mom because she is kind, caring, and a nice person and helpful to others. I love you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Annabelle, you got something you want to say to mommy? Yeah. What is that? You're my best friend and you're beautiful and I love you. Love you, babe. I'm wishing my mom one day a happy Mother's Day in heaven. She unfortunately passed away in 2016. I love and miss you so much, mom. My mom, who is amazing and she has been with me through thick and thin. She was in labor for 21 hours, or 22, <laughs> and she's awesome. She's kind, helpful, and caring. I love her so much, and she loves me so much. I love you, and happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. You're the greatest person in the world. Hi, Mom, I just wanted to say that you're really amazing and I just love you. Happy Mother's Day! Hey everyone, welcome out to our very first service in our virtual revival. Yay. Are you excited? I'm so excited! Dude, I'm really, really excited about this. I've been looking forward to it for so long because I get to have a week off. No, wait, I, I mean, why. there's gonna be great messages and great I'm messages. looking forward to the great messages <laughs> and I just know that God is going to awaken something yes. new in us. I believe that this is gonna be a catalyst moment for us to move forward as a community of believers and as individual followers of Christ. I'm so excited today we're going to be starting off our virtual victory revival with one of my good friends pastor kelly stickle all the way from lethbridge canada in canada. my victory church now my victory church is a multi-site church mm -hmm. they've got churches all over alberta and god is doing some incredible yes. things there uh, pastor kelly came and preached for us in our go conference yes. in november it's amazing and he's just such a dear friend to us mm -hmm. i met him just last year i feel like i've known him for such a long time yeah. there's so many similarities we're both pastors of a victory church we have the go conference he has the go cast we both love motorcycles and leather jackets mm -hmm. i mean it's just awesome we've just hit it off so well and i love him so much He's been such a huge uh, help to me and a mentor to me. So many times I've been able to just pick up the phone and call him and he's walked me through some things yes. and I've been made a better leader because of him. And mm -hmm. you were able to meet his wife, Joy Lynn, in August, right Ash? Yeah, and she's been a huge help to me in my life and she's someone I can look up to as a wife and a mother and a pastor and I'm just so thankful for Joy Lynn. So, yes. love you girl. So we've had the pleasure of having Pastor Kelly in our church building mm -hmm. in November of last year for our GO conference and here he is again preaching for our virtual revival today. I want you to get loud, shout down your computer screen, your TV screen, your phone screen, whatever screen you're watching, I want you to shout those amen so loud that they hear it all the way over in Canada. I want you to get up in those comments and type amen. I don't know how they spell amen in Canada, probably some wrong way, but just try, <laughs> take a stab at it, you know? Just say, you know, about, you know, make sure if you're doing anything that end in O-R, you put a U in there because they spell things funky. I'm but let's sorry, get guys. as Canadian as possible <laughs> and make some noise for my good friend, Pastor Kelly, as he comes up to bring us the word today.
everyone. I hope you're doing well. This is such a great idea doing a week of meetings like this. I hope it's blessing you. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Daniel and Ashley. They're amazing friends, great leaders. You guys are so blessed to have them. Also want to give a shout out to Pastor Larry and Linda. Love you all. You're amazing. It's such, uh, so good to be with all of you uh, last fall and hope we can do that again soon. Get all this lockdown stuff done with. That would be awesome. Today, I want to talk to you about a verse that, to be quite honest, bothers me. I know it's kind of an odd way to start a message to talk about a verse in the Bible that bothers me. In fact, there's probably lots of verses in the Bible that I prefer weren't there. But this one in particular really stands out to me. It doesn't just bother me, it terrifies me. This verse is found in Psalm 78. And Psalm 78 is a passage where King David is writing the history of the Israel nation to his people. It's a great idea for a leader to do this, to focus on, you know, things that God did in the past to to show them the destiny of their nation as he's, he's casting vision for what God wants to do in the future for their nation. It's a great idea. He starts about the story in Egypt where the Israel nation started off as slaves in Egypt and their miraculous escape from there. And, and into the wilderness and how God parted the Red Sea and some of the miracles that happened in the wilderness. And he gets to verse 41, and it's just about the time that they were about to cross over into the promised land. And he writes this verse, Psalm 78, verse 41, he says this, They limited the Holy One of Israel. They is referring to this Jewish nation, to the children of God. And it says, they limited the Holy One of Israel. And the reason why this verse bothers me is quite honestly, it's because, well, it shows that God has limits. And it bothers me terribly and terrifies me deeply inside because not only does God have limits, but it says that they limited God, that that human beings, God's creation limited the creator. And that to me is just actually, I'm terrifying. I love serving the omniscient, all-knowing, the omnipotent, all-powerful God without limits. And yet there's one verse that says God has limits. And not only does he have limits, but the limits are us, his created beings. And if the Israelites had the ability to limit God, then that means that we have the ability to limit God as well. To me, that's just absolutely terrifying. Well, in order to figure out how they limited God so that we, you and I, don't limit God ourselves, we need to go back to this this part of the story as in their exodus and into the promised land. We need to find out where the limitations happened. And it goes back to Numbers 13. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Numbers 13. We're going to pick it up in verse 25. And this is, this is talking about Moses just sent, sent the 12 spies to spy out the land. And he asked them three questions. He said, okay, I want you to go into the land and report. And this is what I want you to report. How is the land in which they live? That's verse 19. Is it good or is it bad? And how are the, what are the people like who live there? Are they strong or are they weak? And is the, is the land, is it fat or is it lean? Are there trees in it or not? Is it, is it bare fruit or not? I mean, he's asking these questions. Report on the land, report on the people, report on... on on just, you know, the, the strength of the nations, what is there, which is a normal thing to do. But in verse 25, the spies came back and this is what they reported. They said, when they returned from spying out the land, at the end of the 40 days, they proceeded to come to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation. That's important. They should have probably, with their report, probably gone just to Moses and to Aaron and to the leadership. But they went to the entire congregation, the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, and they brought back word to them and to the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So far, so good. Thus they told them and said, we went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong. They just reported what Moses asked them to do. It's really vital when it comes to faith. This is a little detour, but it's so important for all of us. But they reported back exactly what Moses asked them to do. Are they strong or the weak? And sometimes the questions we ask, we, we ask, will lead us to faith or will lead us to fear? And it's vital, the questions that you're asking, the questions that you're asking God, the questions that you ask yourself. It's vital for us to pay attention to those questions because the answer to those questions will lead us to faith or they'll lead us to fear. Great example of that is in Genesis 18, when Sarah had a question, great question, God comes to them and says, you're going to have a child, and she's old. She says, how can I, at 90 years old, have a baby? Great question. But the Lord came to them 
And so that's the wrong question. Don't ask, is it possible for an old woman to have a child? Ask, is anything too difficult for our God? You see the difference? One question led to doubt and to fear and to criticism or, or skepticism. And the other question led to faith. The question, again, that you ask is vital. Moses asked, report, are the people strong or are they weak? And they reported back and they said, well, they're strong. And that, that answer to that question led then to fear. Watch this. It says that they are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Amalek is living in the land of the Negev and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites are living in the hill country and the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. Then Caleb, see look at this report, the spies, the spies report back. Not only did they report that the, the land is fruitful, but they spent the majority of the report talking about how strong the people are, how fortified the cities are. And their focus began to focus on where the limitations were, because what you focus on, you give power to. And if you focus on the negative, you'll empower the negative. If you focus on what you're able to focus on, like Caleb does just here in a minute, you'll be able to be able to focus on faith. Look at this. Caleb says, quiet the people before Moses and said, we should by all means Go up and take possession of this, for we will surely overcome. See, he chose to focus on faith. But look at this in verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are too strong for us. Caleb focused, Joshua focused on, on, on how big God was, and, and the, the rest of the spies and the rest of the nation began to focus on how weak they were, how strong the people were. See, in this time, you can focus on how big your God is or you can focus on how big the problems are. You can focus on what God has done for you or you can focus on what you lack. It, the choice is really yours. One is going to lead to faith. One is going to lead to fear and to doubt. It's vital for us to focus on the right thing. Then look at this, verse 32. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying the land through which we have gone in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, which is ridiculous. I mean, if the land literally devoured their, the, the inhabitants, there'd be no one to stop them. The people wouldn't be strong enough to stop them. It's, it's crazy. It, they start to exaggerate the problems. See, what you focus on, you make stronger. And if you begin to focus on your problems, it's amazing, isn't it? How you begin to talk about what you lack and you begin to, to focus on that, it gets bigger. The lack gets bigger, it seems to get bigger. You focus on a problem and you talk about a problem, watch what happens. It begins to get bigger and overwhelming. It overwhelms your heart. And they began to exaggerate. Not only did they exaggerate about the land devours all of the inhabitants and all the people we saw in it are men of great size. They now they began to exaggerate that everybody was a giant, that everybody was big. Well, that wasn't true. In fact, later in Joshua, when Joshua took over and led the people into the children of Israel, look what happens. They, they began, they says they, they found four giants, four. And these spies are saying all of the men are of great size. All of the men are giants. Again, what you focus on, you empower and you begin to exaggerate what your circumstances are. Don't exaggerate what your circumstances are. Now, here's where the limitation is. Here's where David, years later, begins to say that there's a problem and there's, this is what limited God from being able to move in this. Because we know the rest of the story. We know that, that they didn't get into the promised land at this time, that, actually, that they actually had to, to wander the wilderness for 40 years until one generation died off, until the next generation of faith was, was strong enough to, take, to believe that their God could and get into the land. Let's not be the people that God's waiting to die off so that our kids and our grandkids can, can rise up and, and take the territory that we can take. Is anything too difficult for our God? Come on. Is anything too difficult for our God? Look at this. Verse 33 is where the limits happen. There also we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Now this, this verse ties directly into what David talked about, the limitations. The limitation they put on God was the belief they had in their heart about themselves. Right? That what they saw about themselves 
We are grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we became in theirs. What they didn't know, what they didn't know is that all the people in Canaan were shaking and trembling in fear because three million people ended up on their shores and they heard about the miracles that got them out of Egypt. They heard about what God was doing for them in the wilderness and they were terrified of these people. They were terrified. And yet in their own eyes, the three million people said, we're like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we became in theirs. It wasn't true. But be, they lost the battle before they even suited up to, to war. They, they lost because of how they limited themselves. They didn't focus on how powerful their God is. They didn't focus on their past. Sometimes you need to focus on your past to see how great your God is, to be able to have faith for your future to see what he can do. Sometimes you need to focus on what God, that God has been faithful to see in the future that he is able but you got to focus on God, how big God is, not on how small you are. See, how they limited God and how you and I can limit God is how we think in our heart. Solomon said this as well. He said this in Proverbs 23, verse 7. He says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. See, the children of Israel, this is so true. In their heart, they saw themselves as grasshoppers, as nothing but insects. And we can't blame them because they grew up in Egypt being treated as slaves. And how do people justify slavery? They begin to, to speak of them like they're insects or they're bugs or they're rats or they're nothing. We see that throughout history. That's what the Germans did to the Jews. They just said they're nothing but animals, they're nothing but rats, to justify in their own conscience what they would mistreat people. So maybe the Egyptians, we can assume that the Egyptians called these people nothing but grasshoppers, nothing but bugs. And it got so much into their own heart that when they came to their breakthrough, they came to their, to their promised land, they couldn't get in there because of how they saw themselves. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So my question for you is, where are you limiting God? What is your heart thinking doing? Is your heart thinking limiting God? There's a verse that kind of gives us an answer to all of this. And again, it's in Proverbs. Proverbs 4 verse uh, 23 says this. It says, above all else. This is Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. Okay, this, so when he says above all else, we know he wrote over 3,000 Proverbs. And he says, this is the most important one. We're going to pay attention to that. Proverbs 4 23 says, above all else, guard your heart. And he says, as a man thinks in his heart. So he's not talking about your, the physical organ. He's talking about the subconscious heart thinking. He says, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. That word issues, this is amazing. The word issues in the original uh, uh, language that he wrote it in, in the original language, he, he, it says that the, it, the word issues literally means boundaries or fences on a territory. So watch what he's saying now. Above all else, pay attention to your subconscious thinking because out of it will form the boundaries or the fence lines, the borders on your life. Now, this is what I believe. They limited God, putting all this together. Psalm 78, 41. They limited God. What they did is they had small thinking, small boundaries. We are grasshoppers in our own sight. They had this small thinking. And God could only farm in the fence line. God could only be able to do what they said what they believed about himself. Not that God is not able to do exceedingly abundantly. Isn't that what it says in Ephesians 3? Exceedingly abundantly all that we ask or imagine or think. God is able. He is able. But it doesn't say in that verse that he will. It says he is able. And then the end of that verse, Ephesians 3.20 says, according to the power that works within. Again, according to what is inside your heart thinking. Now watch, they formed a small thinking and that fence line God farmed within that fence line. So for you and me, how do we limit God? With our heart thinking. Do you believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above? Do you believe that God can take you in your situation and do more than you could ask or imagine? Maybe it's our imaginations that we need to expand. Maybe it's our faith and our focus of what our God is able to do. Maybe in this time you need to push in and say, I need to believe that my God is able and push those boundaries. Our God is able. Now, in Numbers 14, I wanna show you one more verse. Numbers 14, the children of Israel couldn't get into the promised land. They ended up, God said, okay, you're going to wander around until this generation dies off. 
And then in verse 28 of chapter 14, Numbers 14, God says something to Moses that you got to see this. You got to see this. He says this in verse 28. He says, say to them, this is God speaking to Moses, say to them, the children of Israel, the ones who just didn't get into their promised land, who said they were grasshoppers in their own sight, who believed that the people were stronger than their God. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will surely do to you. Watch this. God says to Moses, tell them, just as they had spoken. What have they had spoken? They had spoken, we're not able. They had spoken, we can't. And just as God says this, just as you have spoken, not just as I have spoken, not God saying, not as I have spoken. He says, just as you have spoken, I will do in your sight. Again, just confirms that God's going to farm to the fence line. So let me ask you this question. What if God was to do everything that you said? Would you be more blessed or would you be more limited. We got to be careful of what we say. We got to be careful of, of what, uh, what comes out of our mouth because what comes out of, out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you speak limitations, if you speak doubt, just like the children of Israel did, out of that is what you're, what's in your heart. And out of that, God says, I will do according to what you say. Again, it's the fence. It's the boundary on your life. So here's Here's how you move your fence line. I don't want you to be limited. I don't want to limit God. I, I, this is convicting for me. And I'm sure in this time, this is probably convicting for you because we can focus on what we can't do. We can focus on what we don't have. We can focus on what used to be instead of focusing on what God wants to do, what God can do, what he is able to do. Where we focus, we give power to. So how do we change our heart thinking? How do we expand our fence line? How do we do this? Number one, you got to be conscious, uh, aware of what goes into your mind. Because it's not what your mind thinks, it's what your heart thinks. Your mind is going to have fleeting thoughts. Your mind's going to have doubts. You're going to have fear. That's going to be normal. But what you meditate on, what you concentrate on in your mind, and what you focus on in your mind is going to deposit into your, it's going to drop into your heart. So you need to be careful. You need to be conscious and aware and careful of what comes into your mind and what stays in your mind, what you meditate on. If you meditate on what you lack, if you meditate on what you don't have, if you meditate on the negative, if you meditate on the problems, it's going to deposit into your heart and your heart's going to begin to believe that those problems are true. So you need to consciously pay attention to what's in your mind. How do you do that? You need to get into the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. You need to consciously be digesting the Word to see how big your God is because if you see how big your God is, your problems get smaller. So you need to stay in the Word. You need to stay around and hang around positive, faith-filled, Bible-believing Christians. This is not the time to not watch church or not to, uh, to be with, with Christians or not to hang out with, with church online. And be, you got to get in your church. Why? Because it's going constant, to constantly feed you faith. It's going to constantly feed you life and how big your God is. And again, if you, if you drip that into your mind, it's going to deposit in your heart. This is the time you need to get in the word. This is the time you need to worship. Worship is lifting God above your circumstances. So you need to, this is the time you need to put in the worship music. You need to, you need to worship along online with churches. You need to get into worship because worship is going to make your God bigger. You got to be aware of what's in your mind. The second thing you need to do is you need to be aware of what's in your mouth. So your mouth is an indication of what's in your heart. But you need to be aware that what God says, God said this, that what you say I will do. So we need to be aware of if our mouth is speaking negative, that means that something's in our heart that's negative. It's an indication. I need to change my heart, but I need to be aware and conscious of what comes out of my mouth because what, because what comes out of my mouth is going to give power, life, and death are in the power of the tongue. I can speak life into my situation or I can speak death and negativity. And the children of Israel says, we're grasshoppers. They said it. We're grasshoppers. We're limited. So therefore, we can't. So you need to speak that. So be aware of what you're feeding yourself and be aware of what you're speaking. Change your thoughts. Focus on your thoughts. Change your thoughts. Let them deposit into your heart and speak with your mouth. Amen. And let's expand our fences. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you so much 
that you are a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. I pray in this time that you would make yourself more real to us than ever before. I pray right now that you reach into each heart, into each mind right now. And Lord, let us see how big you are and let us focus on what we're thinking about and what we're, what we're dreaming about and what we're imagining. And God, let us see as you see, not just as we see. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Your ways higher than our ways. Let us focus on that in Jesus' name, not our own limitations. And God, I pray that you'd help each one of us in our own stinking thinking to change that mindset, Lord God, to be able to see you as able in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all. Man, that was such a good message from Pastor Kelly today. I absolutely love that. I mean, he's just standing, doing a little sermon on the mount on top of like a Canadian <laughs> so hill with the hobbits. There. And he's about to like come down from, from there with like the Ten Commandments, just ready to go. Yes. It was awesome. I <laughs> love that message. It was the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen for a message. I was just weeping at the majesty of the Canadian creation. Um, but I, I, I loved that message. I think it was just so timely for us now because we're in a time and a season where we are in a limited space in what yeah. we can do, where we can go, how we can operate. But I think that that limitation is something that we carry with us outside of a quarantine yeah. um, where we limit God. Like the creation, the finite creation is creating a fence um, that we're we're forcing God to farm in and, and God can't do anything outside of what we give him access to. I think that's so powerful. What's yeah. that out to you today, babe? I mean, just being aware of what you're feeding and what you're thinking is so important right now. You have to take your thoughts captive. And I thought that was a really great point to make. Yeah. I loved that. And I liked when he was talking about how the spies, when they go into the promised land, they they see these people that appear larger yeah. to them. So that makes them smaller in their own side. Mm -hmm. And so often, I think that we come into these situations where our perception shapes our reality. Right. But in reality, like God exists outside of reality. Mm -hmm. And so God has the ability to influence things that we have no control over. And with God, we can do all things. Yeah. And I think it's just so important today as we listen to this message, as the Holy Spirit convicts our heart, to examine within ourselves, where are we limiting what God wants to do in our life? And if you're out there today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you can have one right now by simply praying a prayer by making a declaration saying, I need God in my life. Would you pray with me if that's you? Would you just say, Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. I ask you to take control of who I am and make me a new creation. The old things are gone away and everything becomes new. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you do something for me? Would you just hop in the comments and say, saved. Just type the word saved. We want to find you exactly where you are. We want to have a conversation with you. We want to mail you a Bible, whatever you need. We want to make sure that you're taken care of because you are absolutely welcome to this family of faith. Um, and I just want to tell everyone else that this is a, a virtual revival, but still like normal, we're going to take up today's giving. We're going to take up the Lord's tithes and our offerings. And I want to encourage you today to give generously. Uh, if you want to give, there are multiple ways that you can give. The first way that you can give today is by going onto our website at victoryoflehigh.com and finding the donate tab and you can give there. What's really awesome about that, babe, is that they can set up reoccurring giving. Now, it's great for right. people like me that are super forgetful, right? Yes, it is. Super <laughs> easy. What other ways can they give, babe? Uh, they can give by text. Text Victory Give to 77977. I've done it before. It's super easy. Real easy. You can also download our app, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Yes. And you can give using our app. It doesn't matter if you're on the iPhone or you're odd and you use Android still for some reason, shame on you. You can download the app and give using the Victory app as well. And if you want to mail in a check, you can do that to our physical address. It's 1201 Taylor Lane in Lehigh Acres, Florida, zip code 33936. Now, I don't know about you, babe, but today might be over and that's tragic, <laughs> but not only can you re-watch today's sermon, you can also share it with somebody else that you feel needs to hear this message. So I want to encourage you to share today's message. If something stood out to you, I want you to, to write it down, put it on social media, get that out there so that people can hear what God is doing. And also want to let you know, we've got some great speakers coming up every single night this week. Today we came to you in the morning in lieu of our Sunday morning service, but every single night this week from Monday through Saturday at 7 p.m., we're going to have more services for our virtual revival. So don't miss it. Go through and subscribe on our YouTube channel or connect with us on Facebook as well so that you don't miss a single service. I am so excited for the next speakers that we have coming up. You don't want to miss it. These messages are going to be life-changing. We can't wait to see you there.